Uh, always a home run when we book our next guest. Ken Rosenthal of The Athletic and MLB on Fox. Kenny, thanks for jumping on again with us. Thank you, Tim. Good to be with you. Uh, All-Star Game, Dodger Stadium. I know you've done this for a while, but please don't tell me this kind of thing gets old. Oh, no, never gets old. It's one of my favorite things of the year. Everyone is so relaxed. You get to catch up with old friends, not just on the teams or in the coaching staffs, but media people, all kinds of baseball people. It is absolutely a blast to be here. It never gets old. I want to couple what Alec Manoa just said with what I was struck by from your tweet yesterday about the 80 All-Stars, in part because I agree, and I tend to like folks who I agree with. I don't have a problem with the 80 All-Stars. Here's what bugs me most, Ken. Like, I love talking real-life moments with athletes, and one of the things that we just heard it from Alec Manoa is the first-time All-Star selection getting to sit around with his young heroes and maybe even shoot the poop with those heroes and with more guys sitting out because they don't need the money or the aggravation or all of that the kids lose out on that and and for me the culture of the game dies a little bit I think we should hold all stars to account a little do you agree I do agree and it's actually in the CBA Tim that they're required to be here but Frequently, players come up with excuses. And the reason I sent that tweet out was kind of just to make fun of the whole thing. 80 guys, it's not exorbitant in the sense of it's 10% of the sport. People pointed out to me that when there were 16 teams, it was an even higher percentage. I get it. But you have guys backing out, and everybody eventually gets in that we talk about being snubbed. Actually, almost everybody. So from that perspective, it can get a little silly. Now, but what you're saying is a great point. This is a tremendous experience, and Manoa summed it up so well, talking about his interactions with Verlander and Pujols, and even for the older players, the guys who have been here before, it's special. Verlander is a guy who loves catching up with other players. You heard it from Alec. So it bothers me when you see guys bail out, and baseball has tried to make sure it doesn't happen, but you can always come up with a physical reason, ah, oh, my hamstring or this or that, and that seems to be what happens. Uh, cooler for you, Al, uh, who holds in the home run derby or Kershaw being able to start at home? Kershaw starting at home and Pujols in the home run derby is cool. I don't know that it's going to go all that well for him, <laughs> but Kershaw in this stadium where he has made such history, arguably one of the greatest Dodger pitchers of all time. And keep in mind, too, a lot of people don't realize this. 2013. He should have started that year, but the game was at City Field. Matt Harvey was hot as well. They went with Matt Harvey. This is kind of a just reward for what happened then and the entire career. And yes, as he said, I know Sandy Alcantara has pitched better. You can even justify others, but this is an entertainment night and it should be Kershaw's night. Awesome. Uh, we can thank Ken for some of our juice today on the show as he dropped the bombshell that Juan Soto had rejected a $440 million deal, that the Nats would uh, entertain trade proposals because of turning down that deal. Now, I know when you drop something like that, a lot of people reach out. What was the most surprising thing to you about the reaction to your reports? That is a good question, Tim, and I don't think I've ever been asked that before about <laughs> a report. I would say the most surprising reaction was not just from certain people in the game, but also fans. Hey, 29 million a year, that's not nearly enough, come on. Right. I get that. And certainly that would have been the 20th highest AAV, but it would have been the largest total guarantee in major league history, and it's over 15 years. So I can't exactly describe that as a low ball offer. In fact, the deal to me it looks very similar to the 330 million 13 year deal Bryce Harper signed as a free agent with the Nationals. Same agent, Scott Boris. They wanted the big guarantee. They were willing to take lesser of, on the AAV. This is the same kind of thing. Yet at the same time, you can understand, Tim, why Soto didn't want to do it. Right. He apparently wants to go free agent. He's got two years. He's going to be a free agent at 26. And the number could start with a five, who knows? So I get it on all aspects, but 
to say that the Nationals didn't give a good effort here, that would be a little bit problematic for me. So immediately all of us uh, armchair pitchers instead of quarterbacks in this spot go to what the hell the trade market would be. Is it the usual suspects if in fact they walk down that road? It is, but I don't rule out some lower revenue teams getting in. I'll give an example. Tampa Bay was in the Freddie Freeman sweepstakes. They tried to do some funky things at the deadline last year with Kimbrell and some other things. I could see them getting in because you have to pay the rest of his $17.1 million salary this year. Next year, it probably goes to the $22, $25 million range. For one year, Tampa Bay could do that, then they can flip them. So I can see a team like that possibly getting in, but the usual suspects will be heavily involved as well. All right, stop scaring the bleep out of Jays fans, Mr. Rosenthal. <laughs> uh, what what kind of haul are we like? Is this is this the biggest haul that we've ever seen? I know that um, someone on the Athletic uh, already went through some of the trade scenarios that it would take, and you know, basically the Jays was two current position players and their top four prospects just throwing chum to the waters to see what's biting. Are we talking about? maybe the biggest haul that Major League Baseball has ever seen if in fact they do trade Soto? It would be up there and it has to be two plus years of control the age the skill of the player and yes it would take multiple top prospects you're not getting him for one top hundred guy you're getting get him for several of those guys plus maybe a couple of big leaguers or Major League close ready players. So yes, I, I can see it being the biggest haul, and that's the reason, Tim, why it actually might not happen, right? No team's going to want to do that. But in my view, once the train starts down the tracks, it's awfully hard to stop, and I expect him to be traded. Interesting, and you're not the only one. I, I have a lot of respect for David Aldridge, who wrote a column again on The Athletic. Um, you don't trade Ted Williams, because he's comparing Juan Soto to Ted Williams, who many have done. and. Like my, the old school in me tends to agree with this statement, but this is just a different world that we live in, isn't it? It is. Mookie Betts got traded a couple of years ago. Now he wasn't Ted Williams, but he was a pretty darn good player, an MVP. And the reality for the Nationals is if they can't sign him for 440 million, they can't be confident of signing him for 470, for 500. He's probably going to go free. What they want to do is maximize the return for him before they lose him. And it kind of stinks. Listen, we all get it, right? We all want to see these guys stay with their teams. But at the same time, it's the reality of the business, and that is why they have to explore it. They have to do their due diligence to see whether this is indeed possible. Uh, speaking of due diligence, the uh, Major League Baseball draft goes over the weekend. The Toronto Blue Jays take a guy in the first round who says that 22 other teams uh, hopefully will regret not taking him. Left-handed pitcher, throws heat, sounds good. What do you make uh, of what the Jays did in the, in the draft? Well, honestly, Tim, I don't follow the draft that closely, but I did see that quote. And I liked it. When a guy says that, when he thinks like that, that to me is a good sign. And hey, it's never a bad move to take pitching. I know these guys get hurt, things can happen. We all get it. And we all get that the draft is a crapshoot, but picks seem fine to me. I uh, can always appreciate you doing this. Uh, and uh, I know that you got to sort through a lot of the response when you drop to something like that. But uh, next time when you come on with us, I would love to see some of the things that you wouldn't say on national TV because <laughs> I think it would be real interesting. <laughs> Thanks for doing this as always. I'm sure. <laughs> Thank you, Tim.